Surf Fam. Glad you all could make it. Today we're going to learn heaps of cool stuff, so sit back and relax. Our learning objective is from Lecture 2A, which is discussing the primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary levels of protein structure and why they are important. The composition of a primary structure consists of a central carbon atom surrounded by an amino group, a carboxyl group and a side chain represented by an R. During protein folding of a primary structure, the amino group reacts with the carboxyl group of another molecule to form what you call a peptide bond. This reaction results in the donation of an OH from the carboxyl group and the donation of an H atom from the amino group to form a bond with H2O. Sir, I still don't get it. Okay. Uh, picture it this way. There are a group of friends with each individual representing a section of a primary structure. One day, a new girl named Hydrogen moves to elementary high. The group of primary structure friends not liking her begin to talk smack. Hydroxide not agreeing was like hell no and decides to stand up for Hydrogen. Carbon seeing Hydrogen approaching tells everyone to shut up. Hydrogen just wants to make some new friends but ah, Carbon has some other ideas. She says can you see it that way? Making Hydrogen sad. They laugh evilly like <laughs> but Hydroxide being the bomb ass friend that he is puts them all in their place. Carbon being the meanie she is kicks Hydroxide out of the group. Because Hydroxide leaves that stink ass group his former friends form a peptide bond. While hydroxide and hydrogen become new friends, therefore forming water. This brings us to secondary protein structures. The first shape which can form is an alpha helix. This is when the polypeptide chain is coiled, which forms a spiral shape. The second shape which can form is a beta sheet. The polypeptide chain is in the form of a zigzag shape, and this produces a pleated sheet. The two different shapes are caused by the interactions between oxygen and hydrogen atoms. These reactions allow the polypeptide backbone to bend and twist into a specific shape. Due to the abundance of hydrogen bonds, this results in the protein having a strong structure. Therefore, proteins are able to keep their shape without breaking apart. Here we have tertiary bonding. This is a 3D structure formed through interactions between amino acid side chains. Let's take a look, shall we? These interactions include Hydrophobic collapse. This is where the hydrophobic side of the amino acid collapses into the center of the protein, away from water. Van der Waals interactions. When atoms are close enough together, the slightly positive and slightly negative ends of the dipoles interact. Hydrogen bonding. As seen in secondary bonding, hydrogen bonding are the interactions between the slightly positive hydrogen dipoles and the slightly negative oxygen dipoles. Ionic bonding, where charged amino acid side chains interact. H plus is donated or accepted. Disulfide bridge. This is where two sulfur atoms bond to each other from opposite amino acid side chains. With these interactions, the polypeptide bond is able to further fold and bend. In some proteins, there are multiple polypeptide chains that are connected. These are called quaternary structures. As you can see, this protein is made up of both alpha helices and beta sheets. Before quaternary structures can be formed, there are three steps that need to be checked off. Firstly, the primary structure of the protein must be correct. Next, the secondary structure of the protein must be correct. And lastly, the tertiary structure of the protein must be correct. It is important that these three steps have been completed correctly as they determine the shape and function of the protein after folding is complete. 
Now that all three steps are complete, post-translational modifications occur to attach them all together and to form a complex protein ready to carry out its function. Thanks for watching How To Basic 101, the function and structure of a protein and its importance. We hope we've been able to educate you on the different levels of protein folding. And have shown the importance of each step. So good luck, Surdies, with the rest of your anatomy and physiology studies.